I've done it. The system now runs off a capacitor as a voltage source to manifest wireless power in the receiver coil. Current consumption is still zero on the meter. Antenna is connected. Um, DC boost converter is off. We're not using it. We're using the capacitor to run the system. Um, current in the system still passes through the digital meter. LED is lit pretty bright. Wireless power is still present in its blinking state. That's what's important. The power will be present in a very rapid blinking state. And um, you make it a solid state power source by using the proper tuned receiver coil with a capacitor to smooth out the power fluctuation. The wireless power fluctuation. And we'll do a quick voltage reading. These capacitors do slowly decay over time because they're not low ESR, but they are being used to run the uh, the transmitter. They're acting as just a voltage potential only to run the transmitter with minimal drain. That wireless light is lit. I'm doing all this one-handed. Had to record it. Um, this is the natural voltage decay of the capacitors. So the system truly is using just a voltage potential to trigger. We can time how quickly that takes to decay. How long it goes down. And then I will disconnect the system. I'll disconnect the transmitter and we'll, and we'll watch that the uh, rate of decay in the capacitors remain the same. So I'm showing that the system only needs a voltage potential to trigger itself into activation. It doesn't truly consume any current. Uh, there's a sweet spot for activation being around 88 to 95 volts DC. Any higher or lower of a voltage potential that feeds the transmitter um, will cause it to consume a little bit of power, but there's definitely a sweet spot. And we're watching the natural decay of the capacitors. That's a wireless LED that's lit from the system. You can see it blinking a little bit. The smoothing capacitor helped. Um, I will now disconnect the transmitter and we will just watch the natural decay of the uh, of the capacitor. So now the system is disconnected and we will see that the rate of discharge is still the same because we're only using a voltage potential to trigger the system. And I'm filming this before I have to go to work. So voltage decay is still the same. All we have to do now is find a um, the utmost efficient voltage source for us to tap off of that provides no current and we're in business. The system is in a highly transient mode of operation. Being I hook it up. Should come on now, it's hooked up again. Light will slowly come on in higher intensity. Reading on the capacitors again. Really should have been using a um, clip meter, but I don't have it around at the moment. Light is lit. Pulsing. Also, the act of me taking a reading on the capacitors slightly detunes the circuit, too. But uh, we're seeing that there's virtually... There's, there's Pretty much no decay on the voltage source to manifest pulsed wireless power output.
We just need a uh, very stable, highly efficient voltage source that we draw no current from. And we get, if we can provide an indefinite voltage source as efficiently as possible, because we're drawing no current from it, it's just a voltage potential only that triggers the transmitter into activation. We're in business. Let's see if I can tune this a little brighter. Probably can. Yeah, it's a little brighter. Pulsing effect. I think that's it. The transmitter is in a true radiant energy mode of operation. Try and read a frequency again, which I cannot see on the scope. And um, these capacitors, they're not even the best low ESR capacitors to use. So I can't even read a frequency on the receiver coil. Scope to auto set. Can't even read a frequency. Oop. Or sometimes the scope will glitch out and try and lock on to a frequency, but ultimately it can't. Yeah, there's no frequency there. Or if it is, it's very very unstable and it just picks up a 60 hertz faint background hum from my electrical mains from the um it just picks up somehow a 60 hertz background signal it's not actually picking up what's in the transmitter so we're at no current consumption just a voltage potential only triggers it into operation there's the blinking Diax were key to achieve that. Uh, we'll do another voltage reading again on the capacitor. We're slowly decaying because that's just the inherent natural slow discharge of the capacitors themselves. We only need a voltage source to trigger the transmitter into activation. We aren't technically drawing any current from the capacitors. They're just slowly, naturally decaying um, from their inherent discharge process. I will disconnect the transmitter again. We will see the natural inherent slow decay of the uh, of the capacitors. If I can do this one-handed, there we go. And that light glows dimly because it's running off of the capacitor on the receiver coil. So as you see, there's not really any difference on the um, decay rate in the capacitors. So feel free to like, comment, subscribe, join the Patreon. Um, we sell a book too for only 5 bucks on the Patreon. Feel free to check it out. Uh, this transmitter was built with the theories of old electrical giants many both modern and current a lot of theories from ken wheeler definitely went into this where it should be possible to have a device that outputs power with just a triggering condition and ideally no input would be required and we would have a wireless output so that's that feel free to like comment subscribe join the patreon uh, this video proved the system was being triggered into activation from a voltage potential only, being the capacitors. And the more efficiently we can provide that voltage potential, at no cost to us or no decay, we're in business. And I can keep we can keep stacking transmitter modules to get a higher wireless power output at no current draw. So, thank you everyone, and I'm going to try and keep this video under 10 minutes. Feel free to check out the last video too.